I would like to say how thankful I am for all of you being here today. We have a lot of visitors who are supporting our graduates this morning, and we are so thankful and honored that you're here to be with them uh, during this celebration time. And we're thankful as a church to sort of celebrate the fact that they are moving on to a greater time in their lives, and uh, we're so proud of them and thankful for what they have done. There was a preacher who was performing a, a wedding ceremony, and he came home, and his wife asked the preacher, she said, how did it go? He said, well, I'd have to say, uh, I asked the wife if she would obey as long as she shall live, and she said, are you insane? And the groom said, I do, and everything was downhill from there. <laughs> well, it's interesting to me that whether you choose to marry the person or what shoes you go to uh, school you go to or whether or not you serve God are all major decisions that you will make in your life. And I want to tell you today, as these graduates who are going on, that whether or not you serve God when you leave home is the biggest decision that you will ever make. You know, I think of this passage as recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 when God said, I call to heaven and earth to record against you this day. I set before you life and death and blessing and cursing and therefore choose life that you and your seed will live. I want us to go to Joshua chapter 24 today and find our lesson. And this will be the springboard for everything we're gonna mention today as far as what concerns our decisions that we make. I wanna share this poem with you while you're turning there. If you would have some worthwhile plans, you must watch your can'ts but also watch your cans. You can't aim low and then rise high. You can't succeed if you don't try. You can't go wrong and come out right. You can't love sin and walk in the light. You can be great if you'll be good and do God's will as all men should. You can ascend life's upward road although you'll bear a responsible load. For life is great to every man who lives to do the best that he can. A man named Walter E. Eisenhower wrote those very wise words. Let's notice the words of Joshua today for our lesson and talk about the decisions that we make as far as the rest of our lives are concerned. Now, I believe that not only graduates can learn from this, uh, I can learn from it. I believe that you, no matter what age, we can all take something from what Joshua has to say. Joshua said, now fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served which were on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And he said also, serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served which were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, notice what they said. God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods for the Lord God. He is our God. He is the one that brought up our fathers out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage in which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went among all the people through whom we passed. I want to stay right here today and just notice some key words that will sort of build our lesson for us today about celebrating the decisions that we make for the rest of our lives. Let's talk about the imperative nature of these choices, the individual nature of these choices, and the inclusive nature of these choices. Number one, let's talk about the imperative nature because it's interesting to me what he said here as recorded in verse 14. He said, now, therefore, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. You know, now is, is no better time than right now. <laughs> uh, it's interesting to me that Pharaoh, when God asked him, when would you like for me to take away the frogs from you that there'll be no more frogs in the land of Egypt? And you remember in those 10 plagues how bad the frogs were. It, it said when he opened the cupboard, there were frogs in his cupboard. <laughs> When he went to lay down in his bed, there were frogs in his bed. And do you remember his answer when God said, when do you want me to take away the frogs? He said, 
tomorrow. I don't ever understand why he said that. You know, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation, and that is what we're learning from this point right here. I want to talk about this word now just for a minute. There was a high school boy, and he was being tutored in math by another girl, probably his girlfriend. And anyway, uh, it was at her house in the dining room, and he leaned over and he kissed this girl. And he said, now that is addition. Well, she kissed him back. And she said, now that is multiplication. They didn't realize her daddy was standing right behind both of them. And he said, son, go home. That is division. (laughs) You know, whether you go off to college or whether you marry the person that you love, if you choose to stay with God, you'll be in the right direction. And I want to tell you today, you know, I I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I want to just be in reality here. You and I will make mistakes. And some of the greatest mistakes that we'll make is when we're young. But I want to urge you and encourage you today just to stay on that direction, that path that leads to the Lord. Stay in the church Stay reading your Bible. You know, the the worst thing that can happen to you when you go off to college is you quit going to church. And I promise you, you'll look back like I did and you'll have so many regrets and you say, you know what, if I just would have been faithful to the Lord during that time, I wouldn't have to regret all those things that I'd done. Now is the time. It is very imperative to serve the Lord while you are young. I'm gonna give you four passages just very quickly, okay? Okay. It's interesting that Peter is writing during a time of heavy persecution. And he says, here's what I want you to do right now. If you're going to stay faithful to God, he said, look, you have to do these things and you have to do them right now. So let's look at these quickly and you could write these in your margin. I'm just going to notice them in a rapid fire fashion. But Peter describes the people of God. He said, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in times past, he said, were not a people, but notice, now the imperative. Now you are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. And as long as you remain part of the people of God, you will keep obtaining that mercy. But young people and old people alike today, I want to urge you today to never leave God's people. That's where the blood of Christ is. It's in the church. In Ephesians 5, 23, the Bible specifically says that he died and purchased the church with his blood, that he is the savior of the body. And I hope today that you and I both would be in the body right now. That's the imperative. Let's move forward to chapter 2 two and verse 25. He said, you were a sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Remember, he's writing in a heavy persecution. And he said, don't keep your eyes on everything that's going on around you right now. You know, people are being killed for their faith. They're going to prison because they're believers. He said, look, keep your eyes on here right now give you two more. In chapter 3 and verse 19, he says, he went also and preached to the spirits which were in prison, which also were disobedient. When once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. When that ark was preparing, there was only eight souls that went in. And he gives a picture and he said, well, look, here's what needs to happen right now. Okay, I give you a picture of Noah's ark. Who was in that ark saved by water? He said, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. You see, that's the imperative. I want to urge you today, whether you're going off to college or whether you're leaving these doors to go home today, if you've never obeyed the gospel, will you consider it today, right now? It's imperative that you consider that choice It will affect the rest of your life. And I tell you, it will also affect others in your life as well. There are two employees. They were sort of chatting and they said, you know, the boss wants a meeting today at 4.30. 
one of them kind of complained. She said, you know, I, why does he always want a meeting on Friday at 4.30? The other one looked at her and said, because people tend to agree with him. <laughs> he is the boss. You know, God says that right now is the greatest time. He's the boss. I can choose right now to say, okay, I want to serve God for the rest of my life or I don't. And I hope today as young people that you will continue to do that. Number two, decisions determine destiny not only because they are imperative, but also because they are individual. If you're there in, in Joshua 24, I, I wish I would have just put every time on the screen that you could see this word. But let, let's read it together just quickly. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and notice, serve him. In sincerity and truth, put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and notice, serve you the Lord. And he said, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which are on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, he mentions that eight times if you keep reading. This individual choice is whether or not he said, are you gonna serve God for the rest of your life when you go into that land? And the people answer, just like you I believe are answering today. Yes, we will. It is an individual choice that we are making. I want to give you three things about this individual choice. The first one's found in Joshua chapter 14. So if you're there in Joshua, let's just back up just for a moment. In the operating room of a large hospital, there was a woman who was applying uh, for this job, but the surgeon, he he wanted to sort of give her a test. He said, I tell you what, I'm going to put you on a 90-day grace period. And if I feel like you do a good job at the end of 90 days, you're hired. So she's the first day on the job. <laughs> first surgery, she goes in to help this doctor. He's supposed to be one of the world-renowned surgeons in this field. He, he does an excellent job, and she knows it. She wants to work on his team. It's time to finish the surgery, close up the incision, but her job is to make sure that everything is accounted for before he closes the wound. She's missing one bloody gauze. She said, sir, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, we don't have everything that's accounted for here. We're still missing one. He said, no, we're not. She said, with all due respect, sir, I want you to know I respect everything you're doing, but we are still missing something, and I don't want something to come up later and all of us get into trouble. We're missing one bloody gauze. He said, lady, we're going to close up this wound, and we're done with the surgery today. She said, doctor, if you close up that wound and we don't have that bloody gauze, I'm walking out of here, and I'm never coming back. He lifted up his shoe and looked down, and there it was. He knew it was there all along. He was giving her a test. Friend, I want to tell you today, sometimes it will be difficult to fulfill your responsibility. There are times in my life, spiritually, when I say, I do not want to go to church today. But if you go, you'll feel better. There'll be times when you say, I do not want to serve the Lord today. But I think I learned a lesson from Joshua. Let's keep trying. Let's keep on going. The individual choices that we make are very personal. You look here in Joshua chapter 14. I'm just going to give these to you very quickly. He said, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, came to me in Kadesh Barnea. This is uh, uh, Joshua speaking here to espy out the land and I brought him word again that was in my heart and nevertheless my brethren that went up with me they made the heart of the people melt but here's what he said but I wholly follow the Lord the individual choice that he made from that point on affected the rest of his life it was very very personal well interestingly enough you come to Numbers chapter 32 and it was also planned 
when it says that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, God said, for they have done it. Joshua and Caleb were the two who were blessed to go in the land of that generation. All the other generation was not allowed to go in. Their choice was personal. It was planned. There was a teacher who taught a class of mentally impaired teenagers, special ed. This teacher taught them how to repair electronic equipment. And it was pretty neat because some of them were very, very good. In fact, a boy named Nathaniel, uh, he was very interested in repairing like uh, microwaves and toasters and things like that. And one day he came to school and he had a broken toaster under one arm and he had a loaf of bread under the other. (laughs) He was ready for class. He planned to succeed. And I want to tell you today, you know, we plan all these things as families. We plan to go to college. We say, I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to do this profession. But do we ever plan to succeed spiritually? What am I going to do in the church when I leave home? What am I going to do as far as the kingdom of God is concerned to succeed in that area? It's very personal. It's very planned. I like this. It's powerful. It's interesting to me that God gave a special piece of land to Joshua's descendants. You know, because Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's your text for this morning. So because he said that, God planned something very special for Joshua. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Nun, Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord. But notice what happened. Caleb gave this city to Joshua. It's interesting to me what is so special about this city. You'll find that there in uh, Joshua chapter 15 and verse 13, and in Joshua chapter 14 and verse 14, that Caleb said, okay, we'll take the land round about Hebron, but we're going to give this city to you. What is so special about Hebron? In Genesis 25, verses 9 and 10, you're going to find some special people who were buried in a cave called the Cave of Machpelah. It's in the city of Hebron. Abraham is buried there. His wife, Sarah, is buried there. Isaac and Rebekah and Leah are all buried at this sacred city for these people, the city of Hebron. So, friend, I want to tell you, that's not just in the Bible for no reason, right? That's not just there for no reason. The reason why Caleb gave that land to Joshua and the reason why God gave the best of the land to Joshua and Caleb is because they said, we will wholly follow the Lord. We'll give it our best shot. Today, decisions are individual. Decisions are imperative, but number three, decisions are inclusive. In your text in Joshua 24, he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And what was their answer? They said, we'll do it too. You know, if if you can do this, then I think we can do it too. And I tell you what, we're going to follow you and you will be our leader from this point on. In Joshua chapter 24, if you'll notice there, if you're still there in the same chapter, look at verse 16. The people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. You move down to verse 23, and now therefore, he said, put away the strange gods which are among you. Incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve, and his voice will we obey? There was a young man, his name is Antonio Stradivari. He was a young Italian. He really wanted to sing, but you know, he 
He tried and tried, and he just did not have what it takes to be a singer. But he was very mu musically inclined. So then what he did was he could not afford to buy a violin. So you know what he did? He made one. I mean, he spent hours and hours because he didn't have all the necessary tools. I mean, he had to do it all by hand. So he spent hours and hours and he just made that thing look the best he could. He was barely a teenager. He was so proud of what he had made and he, he began to play. He learned a few songs and uh, he went to the best violin maker in Italy and he showed it to him. Surprisingly, this man opened the door when he knocked and he showed him his handmade violin. He's just a teenager. This violin maker was very impressed by him. He said, you've got what it takes to do something really great. Antonio Stradivari grew up and invented what you know to be the Stradivarius. If you buy one today, you could probably purchase one, some of them upwards of five to $10,000. They're some of the best violins known to man. Friend, he thought in his mind something that he was going to do and he put his whole heart to it. Today, as a graduate, we want to see you do that. We want to see you soar like an eagle when you leave home. I have a lot of confidence in you today. I have a lot of confidence in your families. You've got some good parents, I'm very proud of you, proud of all of those who serve this congregation in a very effective way. We want to thank you so much for all that you do. And I want to close with this verse. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all of the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Destiny is determined not always by chance, but by choice. The choices that you are making today are imperative. They are individual, and they are inclusive. I hope today that all of us here have learned a good lesson from Joshua, and I want to tell you, you could make the best choice right now. If you come down and obey the gospel, I'll be honest with you, God needs you. God needs more people in the kingdom. Today, all of us are not perfect, and all of us need the blood of Christ. And I want to urge you today, if you want to get rid of a burden and serve God faithfully today, you can but you've got to obey the gospel. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Jesus said with his own mouth, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish, Luke 13, 3. Jesus said with his own mouth, whosoever therefore will deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who's in heaven. But whosoever will confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father who's in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. They said on the day of Pentecost, men and brethren, what shall we do? And in Acts 2, 38, he told them very plainly, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As we learn today in 1 Peter 3, 21, that baptism doth also now save us. Before the church was started, they, didn't, they couldn't contact the blood of Christ. It, the church was meant to contact the blood of Christ. And I want to tell you today, there were people who told Jesus while he was here on this earth, I believe that you are the Christ. That's all they had to do. The blood had not been shed for them yet. Ever since the shedding of the blood of Christ, friend, I want to tell you, his blood is in his body just like it's in my body. My blood is in my body. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 23, that Christ is a savior of his body. I'm begging you today to be a part of the body of Christ.
last but not least, the Bible says, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Let's give it our best shot. Thank you so much for being here today. If you have any need, please come right now as we stand, as we sing.